Hey everybody, this is the Scotsman. Uh, we're just doing a little thing here on the CB&I test, the Schedule 10 stainless. Now, uh, they say that they were over in Mississippi and had a, like 13 welders, one pass this. And they were over in Mobile last week and I had welders calling me, crying about not being able to pass the test and the inspectors mean and, and all this. So I went over there and talked to them and figured out what they wanted. But first, that reminds me of a little joke. You know how to tell if your little boy is going to be an operator or a welder? Well, you put him up in the cab of that D5. If he goes to sleep, he's going to be an operator. If he starts crying, you got a welder. Not saying that I'm the best at this, but uh, just to show some guys how to do it. Uh, they want a 5.30-second gap. Now, so I know a lot of people are used to uh, syncing this in, buttoning it up on Schedule 10. They want a 5.30 second gap. Uh, they said he was concerned about it closing up. So I've always used, was taught to use wedges, but that's neither here nor there. But anyway, this back feeding method is uh, use a 1 8 wire and keep that tungsten pointed 90 degrees into the pipe. And once you get the puddle going, you just touch that wire to that leading edge of that puddle and it'll break surface tension. And then it's basically going back and forth, moving the wire from side to side with the tungsten and puts a pretty reinforced bead inside and and you know you can give them what they want there's not a whole lot of room here for air though being that it is schedule 10 so you're gonna have to you know give this some thought and uh kind of give it a dry run make sure you're in the right position to do this we do it freehand and uh we do it looking at the leading edge not not looking through the gap or anything so it can be done this first the first one we did was with four tacks and then this one right here we did you know two tacks half and half and uh what we did is we welded up the large gap first and had a wedge in the other side when the wedge dropped we knew it was opening up uh on the other side to to give us the gap we needed then we moved over there and welded up the other side uh there's just there's a bunch of different ways to do this so you kind of got to get a feel of what they want what the inspector wants great guy over there for cb and i he's a uh real experienced welder used to be a welder now he's an inspector or client and uh you just got to give them guys what they want they 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 making call on the shots so you got to do what they say uh here we go we did one half and then we came back and did the other half put a nice root in there he showed me what they were looking for they don't want anything flush they want it all reinforced uh back fed method and then on the cap they want tight weaves he wants it charlie moore style basically push that tungsten way into the cup like this and about a 50 degree angle you don't want the angle on that tungsten when you sharpen it laid way back grind it at about a 45 to 50 degree angle it'll help you out on this these tight weaves and you're gonna have to get that arm going fast back and forth it's a, it's a quick movement back and forth with your arm to keep from burning up that stainless you don't want to turn it black you want to have some color in it so i hope this helps somebody get you prepared you know we were telling them come on down to our, our shop and we'll let them pre-test if they needed it if they're going to be over here in mobile much longer but uh y'all have a good one see you next time